1504 moved from the 1504 address. All right. Hi, I'm Travis, and I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Hi, Travis. Travis. Uh, it has been a while since I told my story, um, so there may be some bumps throughout, but bear with me. Um, I actually celebrated a year sober uh, about two weeks ago, September 15th. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it was the hardest year of my life uh, and one of the most chaotic. Um, but I'm alive and I'm sober and I'm here tonight getting to be of service, uh, which is a wonderful opportunity. Um, my drinking career started pretty early. Uh, started drinking in high school, drank in college, uh, I lived in New York City for a number of years after I graduated college and was working in advertising and uh, it's not like Mad Men anymore, but uh, it is not far off in terms of just the culture that sort of surrounds that industry, especially in Manhattan. Um, did that for a couple of years. Uh, I was very unsatisfied. Uh, in my career and made a switch to do something that I had wanted to do for a long time, which was to work on political campaigns, uh, supporting Democrats and various uh, issues that I care about. And that was in 2016. That was my first election that I worked on. Um, and I bring that up because I really, over the last year, have been able to kind of peg the start of my problematic drinking to that point in time. Uh, I had to move to the other side of the country. I'm originally from New York. Uh, I had to move to San Francisco uh, and work a job that I was just not really prepared for in any way. Uh, it was very chaotic. It was very stressful. Uh, for me, it was very lonely. Uh, a lot of the people that I worked with were from San Francisco or from California or from the West Coast generally. Um, and I was not, and I had a really hard time meeting people. Uh, and so what would I do instead of going out and meeting people? I would just stay uh, in my apartment by myself and drink and do drugs and uh, just kind of wait for the time to pass until it was a new day. Um, I have a very vivid memory of that year, uh, Halloween. And, you know, it was uh, October of 2016. So the election was like a week away. Uh, and by that point I'd been in San Francisco for almost a year. Uh, and didn't know anybody. I didn't really have anybody to celebrate Halloween with. Um, and I just remember sitting in my bed uh, on whatever it was, a Friday or a Saturday night, and there was a huge party going on above me in my apartment building. Uh, and it just, it felt really unattainable, like to be that social and to have that many people in my life. Um, and that sort of became a self-fulfilling prophecy uh, over the next couple of years. I stayed in that industry. I continued to move around a lot. Um, so I experienced a lot of geographic instability, a lot of instability in my social networks. Um, I wasn't really making strong connections with anybody. Uh, you know, I continued to drink and isolate and drink and isolate. Um, and in 2018, uh, I would say the first real serious consequence of my drinking caught up with me. I was working on a campaign in the Midwest uh, and I was part of the leadership team. And by that point, my drinking had gotten so bad uh, that I just, I couldn't stop. Um, I'd never really had that happened before, I'd always thought that I was able to, you know, I drank a lot, but I was able to keep it under control and never would have considered myself an alcoholic. But um, that year, again, like three or four weeks away from election day, uh, I 
trespass at a casino because they kicked me out because I was too drunk and I went back in uh, and I got arrested uh, and genuinely did not know why I had been arrested. Uh, didn't remember getting kicked out of the casino, didn't remember going back in, uh, you know, all of a sudden I came to in a cop car uh, and spent the night in jail, uh, which almost cost me my job. Um, almost made it into the news, which would have been embarrassing uh, for me and for our candidate. Uh, probably would have been the end of my career. Um, and still, I didn't really learn any lessons from that. Um, so fast forward to now, a couple of years, a couple of campaigns later, uh, and well, not to now, to September of last year. Um, I tried to white knuckle it um, at one point because I was in a relationship that was very serious and she asked me to, and uh, she asked me to stop drinking. It wasn't clear at that point to me uh, that I had become a full-blown alcoholic drinker, um, but it was clear to a lot of other people in my life. <laughs> Uh, her included, and so I stopped drinking, but that was all that I did. Uh, I just stopped drinking and was a dry drunk for several months, and that was terrible. Um, I didn't go to AA meetings uh, because I wasn't an alcoholic. I didn't bring it up in therapy because I wasn't an alcoholic. Uh, I just refuse to not even accept the fact or refuse to even entertain the idea, uh, you know, for a long time. Um, anyway, I obviously relapsed um, and kept it from pretty much everyone in my life for like eight months. Um, Around month three of that time, uh, I started drinking so much that it just, it didn't stop. It was a full 24 hour thing. Um, I would wake up early before my partner woke up, like 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, specifically to drink before she woke up because, you know, by that point I was laying in bed, sweating, heart pounding. Uh, you know, I realized that my brain was starting to work in ways that I didn't recognize. Uh, you know, I would keep track of which store I had been to, to buy, you know, which alcohol and, you know, did that store have it? Did I buy them out last time? Uh, you know, don't want to go there because I know this person is working at this time and I've already seen them three times this week. Um, and it was just... It was pure insanity. I mean, I had liquor hidden all over our house. Uh, I, you know, would drink and drive on a regular basis. Um, my life was completely and utterly unmanageable um, and very scary. And I knew that, um, but I didn't know what to do about it. Um, you know, by that point, the relationship that I was in had gotten somewhat rocky, no surprises. Um, and I didn't really feel comfortable telling her what was going on because I knew that, that would be the end of the relationship, which spoiler alert, it was, <laughs> um, so yeah, by September of last year, um, I'd basically been drinking all day, every day for five months. Um, my physical fitness went to shit. My mental fitness went to shit. Uh, my relationships fell apart. I fell apart. Uh, and to this day, I don't really remember uh, what compelled me to do this, but I was visiting my parents on the East Coast. Uh, and it was like, you know, 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the evening and we're drink, eating dinner. And I'd been drinking all day. Uh, they didn't know 
um, I've been stealing liquor out of their liquor cabinet. Uh, I, you know, bought a bottle of liquor before I got to their house from the airport, specifically typed into Uber to make a stop at a liquor store that I knew was near their house before stopping at their house, which is just craziness. Um, and we were sitting at dinner and this all had to be related to me the next morning. Um, I asked my younger sister to leave and I just broke down and told them exactly what was going on. Um, told them that I was afraid I was going to die, um, which was probably true. You know, I was either going to drink myself to death or get in a car accident and kill somebody else or something awful. Um, and that kicked off a journey uh, that has led me here tonight. Um, so yeah, the last year has been the hardest year of my life, hands down. Um, I didn't expect that. I don't really know, <laughs> looking back, what I expected, if anything. I think I just needed to get into the rooms to not die or not hurt myself or hurt somebody else. Um, but I've learned so much about myself in that time and I feel starting to feel good about myself for, I think the first time really in my, in my life. Um, you know, I drink to isolate, I drink to tamp down feelings, I drink to tamp down anxiety. Um, and so, you know, there I was 34 years old and really feeling feelings other than anger and depression for the first time, maybe in my adult life. Uh, and that was bizarre. <laughs> uh, I'd never been hit with emotion so hard that it actually took my breath away. And that happens on a semi-regular basis now. Um, but I'm here and I hit a year and I have a program and I have a sponsor and I get to come to meetings like this and be of service to other alcoholics. Um, so, you know, there are still some hard things in my life, obviously, uh, as there are in everyone's, but I'm working through them, uh, and I'm not creating new disasters for myself, new headaches for myself. Uh, and that feels really good. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.